Hi everyone, welcome to Wikipedia Day. Uh, uh, I'm Richard uh, User Faros uh, from Wikimedia NYC, your local, your friendly local Wikimedia chapter. Um, uh, you know, uh, welcome to the Jefferson Market Library today. Today's the 22nd birthday of Wikipedia, who started this day in January 15th, 2001. So thanks everyone for joining, and I'll give you two more minutes to enjoy your pizza, whatever. There are three, three minutes. Sorry, it's three minutes. Four. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Zenzile Zhao Johnson, and I am a contract educator at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And I am here to talk briefly about our experience, which I am calling an Afrofuture praxis. Um, we had the opportunity of working with Richard Nepal, as well as Regine Hardiman, who is in the audience today. Um, and I also am joined by an amazing student, part of the teen council that I work with, Solel Hells, a junior from Medgar Ever College Preparatory. Um, so we're just gonna get started. So I manage a Afrofuturist teen council for the Met in response to the exhibition Before Yesterday We Could Fly, one of the first period rooms of its kind centering the African diaspora and the buzzworthy word Afrofuturism, right? So it, is, it was a year-long internship program that looked at science fiction, art, history, technology, music, film, and centering the origin and the aesthetics in the praxis of black cultures. The program encouraged council members to engage with Afrofuturism, a transdisciplinary creative mode that centers black imagination and self-determination. During their tenure, the teen council members attended a series of workshops with experts, scholars, artists, students, and cultivated a series of programming such as family programming, programming for teachers and for their peers. We were also working in collaboration with the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, which is also a part of the NYPL network, which is where we are based today at the Jefferson Market Library. I also formerly worked there as well. Um, so it was really nice to merge this particular program in tandem with the Met as well as the Schomburg. And then imagine how enthusiastic I was that we got an opportunity to work with Wikimedia. Um, so I'm gonna keep going on our slides, maybe. Okay, so um, Richard is the Wikimedia in residence at the Met and reached out to me to talk briefly about opportunities for programming. Um, which I was really enthusiastic <laughs> about because typically when it comes to teen programming, youth programming, there are not as many opportunities for teens to be able to call imagery documentation and actually put it on an informational platform such as Wikipedia. Um, that generally does not happen, especially for high school students. So we knew that we were going to be in uh, for a, not a wow ride, a, an amazing experimental edit-a-thon ride, I would say. So in order to prepare our students, we had about seven, seven students, seven council members. You know, we got them started with cultivating their own Wikipedia names, usernames, and making sure that they brought their own like laptops. So we're already centering the material and the technology that they already have so that they're learning on site, hands on within the workshop. But because they now have this username, they can then take this work and create more entries as they progress within not only the teen council, but within their lives. So we also did a series of hands on learning like, praxis. So Richard and Regine actually came to visit us, I would say April 2022, because <laughs> what is time? Because we're in a whole new year. Um, <laughs> and it was really important for students to be able to center their own interest in regards to choosing an exhibition object, conducting their own research, um, primary sources, and et cetera, 
and editing wet wiki entries. So Richard came and did an amazing presentation with the students before they got an opportunity to open up their laptops because they were like really giddy. They were like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I was like, are you sure you're ready? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're sure you're ready. Um, but Richard gave an amazing presentation. And then we were able to have um, such hands-on learning where students were primarily in pairs. Um, there was a group that had about three students in it as well um, to cultivate a balance. But they were able to learn and really center verified sources, credibility, understand like who their actual target audience was, maintain some sort of objectivity, and work throughout, well, work together in means of collaboration. So I'm going to invite Solel to come and talk a little bit briefly about the process as a student and an active participant. Um. <laughs> Hello. Um, so one of the first things that I want to talk about with this amazing experience that Regine and Richard had with this workshop with us is, I think Zenzla, you already touched upon it, which is collaboration. Um, when you work on like group projects, you know you always have the um, you. Oh God. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Um, oh. Yes, sorry. Let me just start over, clean the slate. Um, working with this workshop, we learned two main things that I feel like we all worked away with. Um, collaboration and also understanding where and how we get our information and how we're going to present that to other people to consume. So first, the collaborative part, um, working together and bouncing off ideas and knowing how to further develop those ideas to much um, deeper understandings that we could come up with ourselves was an important lesson and a skill that I think we all uh, walked away with um, from not only this workshop but applied later on into the work that we created, uh, such as the zine that we made as like our cumulative project for, um, for this internship. Understanding how to um, work together um, and to further those ideas uh, was an essential lesson that we learned from Wikipedia, especially since we're adding on to the, Af the Afrofuturist period room uh, page on Wikipedia and making sure that our ideas would work seamless with furthering that information that was already there. Um, Second, credibility um, is such an important uh, principle in today's world that's stressed beyond just the information that we look up on our phones. Um, it's stressed on when we're communicating with people and uh, the works that we'll further work on. Um, Understanding that whatever you present or the claims that you make has to be grounded in something other than your own sphere of knowledge. And to give um, citation, <laughs> um, reference, yes, reference. Um, to where you get your information from, having a leading source um, and having that be accessible to other people to then further develop on what you're talking about, where you got it from, um, just furthers that idea of Ooh. creation agency, but also 
also responsibility. Yes. Right? Like there's responsibility and accountability, right? Yeah, accountability, responsibility um, for the ideas and claims that you're pre presenting forward. Ooh. <laughs> that was a big jumble of words, but no, it, all <laughs> it, it all kind of builds on to not only the workshop that we had, but again, in other future product projects that we continue on in the future. I think now we'll open it up um, to the next presenter. I'll just close out. I was just gonna say, I'll just close out in saying that um, Solel spoke to a zine that we created and it's now in its second version. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to distribute this more widely, especially throughout a variety of libraries. Um, a lot of the skills in which they learned within the Wikipedia edit-a-thon are apparent in the zine in regards to where they're culling the information, the accountability, the responsibility of culling information and disseminating it throughout to and through a wider audience. So thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, we are the, hey, we're the LaGuardia contingent uh, from LaGuardia Community College. Uh, there's also one person in the audience <laughs> and we're gonna be yeah we're you know um, and we're gonna talk today about two uh, projects that we're doing um, I think maybe we should go the archives first because mine is just you know more like a yeah, what do you think yeah so for um, how many years now on have we been doing this I you know what, I, I would have to pull up our project page on Wikipedia to tell you exactly when, but it's been, because it's been that long. At, 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 at CUNY and at LaGuardia Community College specifically, we've been working with so many educational projects uh, with Wikipedia um, for, like, from a whole range of different classes and disciplines. But at LaGuardia, uh, uh, Jimena, or Dr. X as we call her, <laughs> Uh, has been using Wikipedia in so many of her classes, you know, be it from her, her Afrofuturist Octavia Butler classes to the LaGuardia and Wagner archives, which, uh, which is what uh, Michael, a former student and now alumni who's also who's come back to serve as, as an advisor for the current batch of students who's, who, who's working with the LaGuardia and Wagner archives and we're, this, these students are working as independent scholars doing research on the, the LaGuardia and Wagner archives uh, particularly uh, focused on LGBTQ history in New York City and Queens specifically. Um, and I, I have a, one, of our, one of the student scholars, Kayla, is here who's, who's interested in public health and nursing, who's going to be doing a research, possibly following up on the project that Michael started with his team years ago, where, where they, they wrote the entire Wikipedia entry on HIV AIDS in New York City, which is like a historical overview entry, which is like pretty, pretty impressive that work. Wasn't I yeah. It did not exist. Mm. So Michael, can you, you want to tell us a little bit about like your process, like where you go? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so hi, I'm Mike. Um, so like Anne said, I, I was one of her students and um, recently now I work as an advisor to the current fellows that work in the archives. Um, so in the words of Victor Fuchs, who was an economist, I, I work as an economist. Um, he says, some people talk in their sleep, but economists uh, talk in other people's sleep. So how, so how can we bring economic history, especially with LGBTQ history and history on public health, how can we bring it all together? So what is the one place that everyone goes to to prove someone wrong? It's <laughs> Wikipedia. So, so at the archives, I tend to, uh, as a process, my, my personal process that I teach um, the current fellows, is to teach policy as a story. And by that, a lot of the uh, documents from the archives are basically memorandums and different pieces of legislation that when you 
read all of that and come to, and bring it together into a Wikipedia entry or eventually an academic article, it becomes a story. Um, so my specialty is economic history, but as historians, our job is to tell a story. So um, that's one of the ways I teach my students. Another um, way that I look at the process is to, um, I, I, I basically, I, I, when, I, when I read history, I also tend to look at the different various biases that are in both primary and secondary literatures. Um, so whether it is, um, I forgot the different types of bias at the moment, but um, whether if it's um, internalized biases or external, yeah, and complacent biases, you know, we, we all break that down. Also, people have different viewpoints, so we want to bring that together into at least a categorized way of thinking. Um, so right now, currently this year, I've been working on a project <laughs> since my undergraduate years. I'm a graduate student now as well. Um, so currently I do um, a history project, both related to economics and history, based on HIV AIDS, but the history of housing policy. Housing policy, unfortunately, uh, nowadays, the majority of housing discrimination, anti-discrimination laws haven't been around until really the 90s. The majority of them is now present since the 90s in New York City. Um, of course, we have a history of <laughs> these policies, but we didn't really have that in law. Now it's in law. Now we want to tell the story of how do we fight for justice in the housing and also um, housing as a public health right. Um, so that's, um, that's just basically a gist of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's great, Michael. What Michael is speaking to is how this educational work really sort of, I think it really helps illustrate how Wikipedia is as a location for public history and in, in not just locally, but glo globally. It's, it's pretty clear, right? And I, I, I think and just, I think Dr. X and I are especially, uh, we feel very motivated how that it, it's, the, the work that we were doing with students, it's motivated students to pursue history more formally, you know, as uh, go, moving on in their educational process as well as in their professional careers, you know, there's just so much potential for this work, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the first project. So it's a, uh, like Anne said, independent study based on the LaGuardia and Wagner archives, which have a ton, a ton of material about uh, New York City. Uh, it's a great archives that we have at the school. Uh, the other project, uh, you're taking a look at one of them. I, during the pandemic, I moved away from um, having my students edit Wikipedia because I normally do that in teams and trying to organize people remotely in teams, people that never met before. That was a little bit, you know, like they, they didn't even have the interest on Wikipedia because of course you're gonna tell me, yeah, but Wikipedians work remote. I'm like, yes, no, I know, but they kind of like want to do it and they know each other. So it was just too much for them. There was too much going on for them in their lives to be, for us to be doing teams. And so I decided instead um, that I wanted to try and see what would happen if we started a book together, right? So um, what you have uh, back in the, on the screen is a wiki book. So wiki books is a uh, sister project of Wikipedia. As you know, there's tons of other projects beyond Wikipedia. And the, the interesting thing about it is that the ultimate goal of Wikibooks is to create a book, right? So if you think of Wikipedia, you can create an entry and they sort of associate the entry via links and so on and so forth to other entries, but it's kind of like, a, you know, like you can enter Wikipedia on, from any point, right? And just, you know, go around and wander. It's not, it's not set up as, a, as an encyclopedia, A, B, C, et cetera, right? Uh, or, or a traditional uh, encyclopedia. Wikibooks, on the other hand, the whole point is that you have a coherent book that eventually, if people want, they can download and print and use, obviously, in, particularly in places where there are no libraries, there are no, right? So if you go to Wikibooks, there's books on all kinds of stuff, including bicycle, uh, how to bicycle and how to build bicycle. I mean, like, it just goes on and on. Harry Potter, there's everything. 
So what I did is I started two books uh, with, you know, basically co-written with my students. Uh, one of them is I teach a class on the internet, uh, so it's called Perspectives in Digital Literacy, and that is a class that I teach, co-teach with them. And, you know, we, you know, the students learn about the internet and then they choose a topic that they, want, they wish to uh, write about, like manipulation, and, you know, privacy, whatever. And they write essays, right? And then the cool thing, though, because uh, Wikibooks is supposed to be an educational uh, site, what we do is we build lessons based on the material. So they're writing a paper, but the paper sort of like the basis for a larger lesson that then, you know, people can uh, use to teach themselves. So they can, somebody can either use the lesson to teach a class or they can, it can be a self-taught sort of type of information, right? So um, I'm only mentioning that one that is not on the screen because this semester I had a student that, who did something wonderful. She wrote a fantastic paper on you know, the perils of YouTube and you know, going down the rabbit hole and so on and so forth. Uh, it was very interesting because it was geared towards her family. She was very worried about her family just spending so much time on YouTube. But then when she was interested in, in making it sort of like a wiki lesson, she was like, well, but I wrote this for my family. So I'm not really sure, like, how do I translate that for, as, a, as a piece for, for the wiki books? So we talked a little bit about it, and then I said, you, this is not your first language, right? Your, your first language is Spanish, and because of mine, is, that's my first language. And she said, yes. And I said, do you realize that you have a unique ability that you could use to help others? Because there's so many materials on the internet about, you know, say, the perils of YouTube or whatever, but they're only in English, right? And she said, oh. And so she thought about it, and she decided to create a page, so now the other book has one page that is completely in Spanish, right? And I, I'm thinking that moving forward, I would like for students with other languages to just, you know, add their own versions of whatever it is they want in their, if they, you know, if that is, you know, uh, if they have the ability of, you know, of speaking another language. But this one that I have here um, is different. This is a literature book, so basically, uh, I'm going on. I don't know, I guess I have to get up and, sorry. So this is um, an interesting book in the sense that um, it's, it's sort of like created in volumes. I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can, sort of. Uh, so this is like the cover page, all right? And I love to believe that this is my student, right? You know, reading and eating of the forbidden fruit, whatever that is. By the way, this cover uh, is a DALI um, generated cover. One of the good things about DALI so far being, you know, uh, not copyrighted is that you can use it in, in Wikibooks. And obviously you could use it in Wikipedia, but then it would be iffier, like how, how you're gonna use DALI for Wikipedia. But definitely for something like Wikibooks, you can uh, illustrate uh, whatever you want to illustrate using DALI. So anyway, uh, as you can see, there's several volumes. So this one here that I'm going to, this is the one that, um, just yeah, so you can see it has different um, uh, entries by students, right? But what's interesting is that because it's a volume, this second volume is not my class, it's a colleague's class. And she decided to create a different, you know, slightly different book with, you know, a different topic. So you can have, I, we can keep on adding themes to the book at Eternum, right? Like forever. Um, so I can contribute, she can contribute, obviously she could, her students could, could contribute to my volume, I don't care, right, isolation of community, which as you can tell, uh, you know, had to do a lot with the pandemic, right, so we started this during the pandemic, um, and yeah, and to just, I don't know, just to give you an example, so we can do like the, the Bradbury collection, right, and as you can see the students, um, use the materials in class, and then they um, maybe write a little essay how the story connects to, in this case, the pandemic, right? And um, they do, like, discussion questions so people can use this as a lesson if they want. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Some students uh, put together games so people can play games based on the story or the, or the poem or whatever it is. So it, it really is up to them how they want to set up the page. It's totally, you know, they, they, they build it up, I help them, of course, 
uh, the analysis is the only part of the, of the chapter that is like for school, right? They have to do an analysis of something, right? So like if you look at here, the paper menagerie, right? This part here that you see analytical point of viewpoint, that's the essay that they write for my class and then the rest is all stuff that they, they put together. Um, the one thing is that you should know if you want to do Wikibooks that I just learned that I think is kind of important is that and like Wikipedia, they kind of discourage um, links, lots of linking, because remember, it's meant to be downloaded and printed. So they really want, like I, I, uh, my friend, my colleague, had a, an introduction, a preface to her uh, book that, had, that mentioned lots of all of the authors that they were uh, looking at. And I, I, did, I linked all of them to Wikipedia, and then another editor came in and said, could you do a page for the authors where you actually like write a little bio for each, right? And I'm like, ah, yeah, that's how you do that in Wikibooks, mm -hmm. right? So whereas in Wikipedia, you would be linking to the different bios, right? In Wikibooks, you would try to like do an author page or something like that. So always with the thinking of this is going to be printed afterwards, hopefully, right? That would be kind of it. Thanks. Thank you. There is. Hi everyone. I'm Ryan. I edit as user of Rhododendrites. And I'm going to talk to you about a contest that we recently ran with the local Brooklyn Bird Club. So, uh, and this is of course another Dolly image. Uh, I looked for a surrealist painting of bird watchers editing Wikipedia. And this is what it came up with and it seemed mwah, perfect. So we're including it here too. Uh, so when we think about birds in New York City, we're talking about pigeons then, right? Like that's what we have. Well, Wikipedia is actually a huge birding destination in the country. It's one of the best places to see a wide variety of bird species because it has a variety of different habitats in close proximity. It has a, uh, it's right along what's called the, the Atlantic Flyway, which is a migratory route where birds flying, you know, birds fly south for the winter and north to breed. And we are right in the middle of where they fly through. Uh, and we have so few parks, or we have a lot of parks for a city, but we are a city that it's all gray and then it's green and then it's gray and then it's green. And so all those migrants that are flying over get concentrated into a few parks. And so you can go into like, there was a day in, last spring uh, or at fall when I went to Prospect Park and saw 70 different species of birds in one trip to the park. So birding is big in New York City. So that's just establishing like, why are you even doing this? Why are there so many bird organizations in New York City? This is why. There have been more than 400 species seen here ever. Uh, in fact, we happen to have an article about birding in New York City. I have a conflict of interest in promoting this today, uh, but there it can tell you like where some of the locations, some of the species, uh, and uh, it is very long, but somehow not long enough. Brooklyn Bird Club is an organization that's more than 100 years old and does some serious birding events in Brooklyn and beyond. And I have long wanted to figure out a partnership with one of the local birding organizations and reached out to some folks there and they were game for it. So they uh, invited me to come do a presentation about Wikipedia and Wikimedia uh, back in September. And then we co-hosted a photo contest. And that's what I'm presenting here today is that after we've done all of the photo contests judging, we now have the winners. So why a photo contest, by the way? So edit-a-thons are an easy way for new users to start, to start editing Wikipedia, but it's still a little bit complicated to learn how to edit Wikipedia. Uh, and I know that runs contrary to some of the things that we say at these events, but by contrast, if you have photos already, they're really easy to just upload to Wikimedia Commons, and then they find uses from there. They wind up in Wikipedia articles, they wind up uh, beyond, whoops, beyond the scope of the Wikimedia universe because outside media outlets wind up turning to Wikimedia Commons to find free media for their publications. So uh, one of the selling points of getting involved that I showed them was that I'd just been taking pictures of birds in New York City for a, a few years now. And if you search for a certain species like a fish crow, 
Like photos that I've taken are like the default picture on the internet of a fish crow because of that. And there are a few of those. And that feels good as somebody who just is not a professional photographer or a professional ornithologist, just kind of a hobbyist who wants people to use their pictures. Um, not everything is well illustrated. New York City birds are better illustrated than in a lot of other areas as with everything in New York City uh, and everything in the United States, really. Yes. 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 Um, and in fact, the, the, the Feminist Bird Club is one of the few b bird clubs around here that is probably notable that does not yet have an article. So note for anybody out there. Um, so and then also I just wanted to it's an easy way to form a, a connection with a, an institution that you can then grow in the future. So plant to see, get people involved with the photos. And then next thing you know, boom, edit a thoughts and all sorts of other projects. So the contest was a, had cash prizes. We get 321 entries. Uh, and I would thank Jen Kepler of the Brooklyn Bird Club, JJ Harrison, who is perhaps the preeminent bird photographer on Wikipedia, uh, and Sammy Sierrat, who is a Brooklyn-based photographer. So now, the winners. So there are some site-specific categories. It is the Brooklyn Bird Club, after all. And so we have some specific birding locations from Brooklyn. This is a black crowned night heron with a pond slider, which is the turtle, um, in Prospect Park. Yellow warbler in Greenwood Cemetery, which is probably my favorite birding spot. A Cassin's kingbird, which is super rare around here in Floyd Bennett Field. Oh, it's getting cut off, so I'll announce the, the winners. The, uh, this one was by Hugh Sansom, A. Johnson 0109, and Ryan Candy. And then the last of the site specific was this. It's just kind of thematic. Uh, it's a gull looking out at the Verrazano Narrows Bridge uh, from the uh, Memorial Pier in Bay Ridge. We had a few categories for outside New York City because, of course, Wikipedia benefits from all of these pictures. And so we don't want to just limit it. And second place was this Venezuelan troupial uh, by Fetafet. That's second place. First place were these buff-necked ibises from uh, Brazil by Amanda Biesquez. All right, so we ha the, uh, there's a reputation of bird photography that is just for people with fancy equipment and giant lenses. Uh, so we wanted to have a category for just phone cameras. So we have people taking pictures like through binoculars or through a scope to, to get a closer look at something. This is in Southampton, some ospreys by Molly Adams who is the founder of the Feminist Bird Club, by the way. And this puffin won the category by Lauren Neal. Yeah, this one actually would have placed as one of the top overall, I think, if it weren't outside of New York and thus not qualifying. Uh, no, this is from Iceland. Yeah. So special prize for common birds, birds that are here all year round. This swan in Prospect Park, I like it. Like it's a, it, this looks kind of like a dancer. And this tufted titmouse looking spunky by Hugh Sansom and a fire escape in Park Slope. Birds in their habitat. This redneck, uh, redneck, red, red tailed hawk uh, <laughs> at Governor's Island at Preeti Desai. And this snowy owl surrounded by Dunlins and flights on Breezy Point in Queens. Birds in flight, which are really hard to capture. You get this hummingbird. This is just over in Brooklyn Bridge Park. You don't usually think of that as a wildlife oasis, but there's plenty there. This one by, by Barbara Shelkiel. And a great blue heron flying over Prospect Park Lake, again by Hugh Sansom. All right, best overall, we have two more left. So coming in second overall is this belted kingfisher also by Hugh Sansom in Prospect Park. They're really tough to, to capture. They're really um, flighty. Like if you like get within 100 feet of them, they run away. And then the winner overall is this Nelson Sparrow in the Plum Beach Marsh in Brooklyn by Jeremy Nadel. Uh, it's a nightmare to photograph anything in grasses and weeds like this. And this is a really uncommon 
bird done really well. This is already a featured picture. It's the default picture in the Nelson Sparrow article and probably about 10 other uploads were quality images. So congratulations to the winners. They have won cash prizes. There are some additional <laughs> on, on the contest page, there's a link to winners and I have taken organizers liberty of, of choosing some honorable mentions. Uh, which you may want to check out. I'm not going to get into here, uh, but thanks to the Brooklyn Bird Club and to all of the participants. And if anybody wants to talk more about running bird contests or photo contests, rather, um, then yeah, feel free to talk to me sometime. All right, Will. Wow. Yeah, they're on the, the, the website, which is linked from our main Wiki New York. But the first prize was 250, uh, second prize was 150, and then all of the special categories were first and second of 50 and 25. So they're not huge prizes, but enough to be, to be special. It's like a nice bonus. People are taking these pictures anyway. You might as well have an impact with them and get a few bucks. Yeah, I could jump on. Is that yours? Or? This is mine. You just go to comment. My name is Will, user Will540Art. Uh, today I'm going to talk about parks. Um, just real quick, I want to talk about the speakers that spoke before us. Uh, really powerful to hear about education and the way Wikipedia can be an educating tool. I really believe that. And uh, Wikipedia is also a really great place for your photographs, as Ryan showed with the bird contest. If you have any photos lying around that you don't know what to do with, you can donate them to Wikipedia and um, they can live out in the world. So uh, I really am excited to talk with you guys today. I don't know if you guys can see these, this pie chart, but I want to talk about parks in New York City. And specifically, we'll start in Brooklyn because that's where I'm based. And I just want to show you this is the progress on wiki data items of parks in Brooklyn from the first of the year to today. So I'm really, yeah, I'm really excited and proud to announce today that almost, almost every park in Brooklyn is on Wikidata, all right? Almost every park in Brooklyn is on Wikidata. Let me get to my next slide. My current count is 453. We'll get it, we'll get into that. Okay, so this, Okay, so this, this is the list of parks in New York City article that, that's been around for years. This is what it looked like at the turn of the new year. It has a section for all the different boroughs, the Bronx, Manhattan, and here's Brooklyn. And you can see someone made this and they added all the parks that they knew. The red links are yet to be made, the blue links have to be made. So th what I did was I took this list and then I added all the parks that I could find. So this is what it looks like now. We, this, let's see. Oh yeah, so. Yeah. This is just Brooklyn, so. It's, it's linked in the, um, on, the, on the Wikipedia Day page. What's that? Yeah, so, yeah, this is very exciting. There's a lot of potential here. Okay, so what I did was I visited the Parks Department website. They have a very comprehensive site where you can search by park, in park, by borough, by name. So what I did is I searched through their database. I cross-referenced it with Wikipedia's database. Oh, getting ahead of ourselves here. Get with this list that I found on the Wikipedia page, and then any park that didn't have a Wikidata item then, I then made it. So how did I get into go going, getting into all of this? Well, it all started at an edit-a-thon. What's an edit-a-thon? Well, if you're not familiar with an edit-a-thon, it's when people get together and edit Wikipedia. So this story actually starts at this place here, Sure We Can, which is a recycling center in Bushwick, Brooklyn. In 2020, during the pandemic, they wanted to host an Earth Day event. So we decided to do an Earth Day edit-a-thon. So this, uh, this is what it kind of looks like from the inside. This is a nice photo by rhododendrites. It's a redemption center, so they recycle bottles and cans, but they're different than other redemption centers in that they're a nonprofit, so they try to make it 
uh, easy to come in and do that and give the canners, which is the name of the occupation of the people that collect bottles and cans, give them some space to sort their belongings and feel part of a community. So this was the meetup page. You can see April 22, 22 2020. You know, this is in the heart of the very be beginning of the pandemic. <clears throat> so we met up. We had articles to edit. We um, just started making a list of some things to work on. And, you know, we made some edits. And getting together with other editors really uh, enriches the process of work on Wikipedia. Sometimes it's overwhelming for me to look at the site and figure out how it works, but actually meeting up with people and bringing them in uh, really helps me kind of be involved in the process. So there's actually a long history. Can I zoom out of here? There's a long history of Wikipedia edit, Wikipedia editathon meetups here in New York City. Actually, even before the editathon, just to meet up in general, this was an innovation. Here's Jimbo looking at a page in 2006. Here at Wikimedia in New York City, people have been getting together to talk about Wikipedia for almost 20 years now, and it's really impressive. And that's how I got into it. Oh, that first got into it was an edit-a-thon hosted at Bureau of Manhattan Community College that I showed up and learned so much. Wait, that's you? That's, this is not me. <laughs> okay. My slides are a little zoomed in. Let me see, how can I get them out? Um, so, f okay, this is the next one. So from these environmental meetups, we hosted, it, w it, was, it was an interesting idea, this Earth Day theme, and thinking locally. So t COVID was still around, 2021 came around, we did it again. We took the work list from the first event, those that didn't get worked on, we brought them over with some new topics, and we pushed it out, and then there, and then 2022 came along, COVID was still with us. We did it again. So we started to develop this pretty substantial list of articles to work on and related to the environment of New York City. And one of the most direct and easiest and least political environmental articles you can work on is a park. You know, everyone uses their park and a lot of parks are notable and, and even minor parks, there's a place for them on Wikidata. Let's see here. So, <clears throat> oh yeah, so okay, so we did these three edit-a-thons, but I wanted to bring the project out of just this Earth Day event, and we had opportunity to host an event at the Bronx New York Botanical Gardens, where we did a Bronx-themed edit-a-thon. So it was the same concept, but instead of Brooklyn-based articles, we did Bronx-based articles, uh, three parks, in Manhattan were written. Um, I see some editors here today that were there. So in this environment of New York City task force, uh, sorry, let me wind back. So what I decided to do was to take the work we were doing in these edit-a-thons and push them into a broader project, which I called the Environment of New York City Task Force. And one of the goals of the Environment of New York City Task Force is to get every park in New York City on Wikidata. So to do that, not only did I cross-reference this list that someone had already made that was pretty thorough, but then I went to Wikidata itself. And I don't know if you've ever used Wikidata, but it's the sister project to Wikipedia that's based around structured data. So this is the query builder. It builds a query for those who aren't super adept at writing their own query. So what I did is I searched instance of park located in the administrative territory of Kings County. That would be Brooklyn, for those who aren't familiar. So what, what I got was this really long alphabetical list here, <coughs> where on the left or right side you see the WD, that's the Wikidata item. So each park has a Wikidata item. So I, lo I looked at this list, and then I compared this list back with this, li this Parks Department list. So we had both Wikipedia, Wikidata, and then the Parks Department, triple cross-reference cross in anything that didn't have, any park that didn't have an item, then got made one. So here we go. This is the current progress. Already in this, already in this year, 
we've made a 16% improvement on the wiki data items for parks in Brooklyn. I want to take it I want to take it all the way. You know, 100%, 100%. Well, what's keeping me from that? This is this is mainly it. This here, there's all these parks that are named park. I'm still figuring out how to like quantify them. Yeah, and also, this also says to me that there's a lot of opportunities to, for new naming of things in Brooklyn. You know, we have over 10 parks called park. What should we call a Wikipedia park? <laughs> yes, there should be a Wikipedia park. I agree, Dr. X, there should be a Wikipedia park. Okay. So I'm just going to wrap this up here, but this is, this is the, the plan. Yeah, we're going to get every park in Brooklyn on Wikidata. And then we're going to get every park in all five boroughs on Wikidata. Then we're going to get every park in, in New York State on Wikidata. I wish this pop-up's blocking. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're going to get every park in New York State on Wikidata. Okay? And then? I know where you're going. The United States. Every park on the United States on Wikidata. Yeah. And then? No, no. That's it. Then it's up to someone else. Yeah, yeah. So we have, we have representatives of our education and outreach panel. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Well, not so much a question, but uh, uh, something uh, I hope maybe you can elaborate on, Will. Um, the fact that you're going to have this stuff in Wikidata means that you could compute uh, or, or at least make, build a query to estimate how much uh, f uh, yeah, acreage and um, area mm. the parks in these various districts. And so I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about how having the information wiki data uh, can help um, people um, who want to know more about parks versus non-park area in Brooklyn. That's a really good question. Sorry. That's a really good question, Bob. And um, now that the parks are in Wikidata, there's a lot of potential to build on that. And I know that the Parks Department has, they, ha they have a lot of data themselves. Like they have uh, acreage information that's in tables that I think there's a lot of potential to, now that the parks have a start of an item, there's a potential to just fill it up. Wow. And one thing that's nice about Wikidata, for anyone that's never used it, you should, it's worth checking out. Just type in anything you're interested in. And it's multilingual, so it'll both show how the article is interacting in different languages. And also, if you don't speak English, there, it will do some translating so you can interact with the site. And you don't have to speak English. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, for the bird contest, I take photos of birds in New York. Will there be another one? Will you run another one? Or will there be a similar thing in the future where I can upload my photos? Not, not necessarily to a contest. I will upload some of my photos to Wikimedia. But will there be another contest? Or will there be more... Uh, like collaborations with bird groups in New York? I sure hope so. Uh, there are no immediate plans. Um, this was, I think they, so last year we did one with the Prospect Park Alliance, which was not about birds, but about pictures inside of Prospect Park, including a bird prize. Uh, and then this year, the Brooklyn Bird Club. I think it's very likely that we will do more photo contests with nature-related organizations. I would love to work with New York City Audubon. I would love to work with the Feminist Bird Club, with the uh, Queens County Bird Club uh, to see what we can figure out. Um, it is a lot of work. Like it's time consuming to set up. It's easy for our partners, which is why it's like an easy ask to open that door. But to do it properly, like we get to like look for copyright violations and categorize things, which is hard for newbies to do. Um, and so, you know, I would, if you want to help organize, then I think that would be make it more likely. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that I would aim for myself to try to maybe organize one thing like this a year. Um, but I'm hesitant to say that because I don't want anybody to save their photos from uploading. Uh, could, you, could you talk about the copyright violation stuff a little bit? Because people may not know what you mean by that. Uh, yeah, so uh, Jimena asked about the copyright violation. So with photo contests, 
We haven't had this be a big problem, but within the movement, there are occasionally problems where as soon as you introduce money to the equation, people try to find ways to get that money. And so we'll just Google a nice picture of a bird and then upload it and say it's mine in order to get that, you know, the few bucks. So, uh, so for every entry, I'm categorizing it, and then I'm also doing like a reverse Google image search to see if it pops up online. And if it does, because often that's legitimate, somebody just posts it to like Flickr before they post it to Wikipedia, um, then we'd have to get them to go through um, this process that verifies like I have the right to upload this. Um, but you know, we've been lucky in that it hasn't been an issue for us, um, but it is something that should it, should it create a big issue, the Wikimedia and Wikipedia communities are not terribly tolerant of contests that uh, that lead to people uploading a lot of copyright violations. Right. Thanks. I had a question about about uh, about uh, genre and, and and writing and education. Um, I mean, it's sort of it's interesting that people you know that having students work on something that's like an encyclopedia, which is, is not something they're usually used to working on, and um, sort of some ways like the museum it tries to be like an encyclopedia. Um, people are, you know, used to reading things in some ways, and, and sometimes there also there's things like, um, like you've saw, saw the, the usefulness of going, of, of, of going toward wiki books rather than encyclopedia to, to use that as like a, as a parallel. So what do you find out of, what do you find value out outside the encyclopedia format? What does it cover? What does it not cover? Maybe it makes me want to go towards something like wiki books. Oh, thank you. I think that's a really great question. Um, after we presented, Solel said, I wish we could have done a wiki book. And I'm like, we should have done a wiki book, right? Like, um, I think the way you presented Dr. X as well as your students about the process of culling that documentation and more so centering the student, their languages and their experience, I think is really um, um, strong. I think because we had one day, we had a one day edit-a-thon, and it was for students who had never, ever cultivated entries or edits within Wikipedia, it was a really great introduction to get them to understand who are we creating this content for? Everyone, <laughs> right? But also, how do you pull sources that support your claims and find things that are credible? I, I hope, and I'm speaking this into existence, um, that we'll get an opportunity to work more with Wikimedia to do a longer and extended program where we can do a wiki book, especially because the end of this culminative pro project was a zine. Um, there you go. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like, I could totally see us having a zine for Afrofuturism on wiki books. Um, so that'd be fantastic. We're dreaming. We're dreaming today. Dreaming. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I couldn't show you, but there's not that many entries on the books, and the reason for that is is there's a lot of reasons. But one of them is that I want the students to always volunteer to you know contribute to whatever. Um, not you know it's not. When you're a teacher, you have a lot of power. So they're like, oh my God, I want to get the A. What do I have to do? That's not how it works, right? So, so um, there's, it's harder when you're doing a wiki books because the whole page is their work. Like it's there. So as opposed to like when I do Wikipedia, I put together teams and they help each other, right? So it's like a very collaborative sort of thing. Whereas here, this is what I wrote for this class, and so I have to think about whether I want to give it up, because I explained to them. So one of the good things, one of the many good things about Wikibooks is we have to have a big conversation about copyright, ownership, to all of those things, and I love that, because you know I'm a writing teacher, so I want them to understand that that is theirs to decide what to do with, right? I cannot just take it, and you know nobody should, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so, so there's that. So there's only a portion of the students Sometimes three a semester, the, it varies, that actually say, yes, I want to do this. And it usually entails them doing it after the semester's over. So these students are amazing. They go like, sure, I will do all of this work. You know, they get their grade, and then they actually wikify, and they add the images, and so on and so forth. So, so I think that that's a big, important difference in the genre. I think that 
the more, you know, I was thinking about the birds, but here, Afrofuturism, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you can totally have parallel projects. You can contribute to Wikipedia, and then uh, Wikibooks allows for you to take stuff from Wikipedia and actually use it in Wikibooks, because, you know. So, um, so you could have a, bird, a Birds of Brooklyn book on Wikibooks, totally, right? Uh, so you could, you could have, like, you know, some people doing that and some people that are not so comfortable, say, working on Wikipedia, working on the Wikibooks, and so on and so forth, and blah, blah, blah. So I want, yeah, I, like I said, it's, it's more individual, which bothers me a little bit because I want the students to learn how to work collaboratively, but, you know, with the pandemic, it's what it is. Uh, and again, it's only a few students that actually uh, contribute because uh, they have the time and et cetera, the, the willingness. Uh, as opposed to the whole class. Um, I have a question for Will. Um, to, you talked about Wikidata and not about Wikipedia. And I wondered if you see any evidence that your work on Wikidata is stimulating authorship of more Wikipedia articles. Mm -hmm. And if when you do this work, you're you're trying to put together a priority list, you know, to kind of prioritize which parks are most worthy of Wikipedia articles. And one more question. Are you capturing uh, geo-referencing data, longitude and latitude? Thanks. Yeah, I, um, I highly re recommend you just go on Wikidata and enter the name of a local park, and you'll see how a park gets recorded. Um, in terms of that question, it's a bit of like a, I, I might not be the most qualified to answer that, but I will, like, the projects are in dialogue, and actually it's a little hard to explain, but a number of the wiki data items I would both create but also update, like, oh, this one has, you know, the wrong name, like slightly, it's not the so-and-so triangle, it's the so-and-so square, so I would change it, and those are, some of those articles were actually created by a bot that was referencing a different language Wikipedia project. So those Wikidata items came from Wikipedia, a bot took them from Wikipedia, made the Wikidata item, and then now I'm adding to them and hypothetically some, a person or uh, could take that information and put them back to a different Wikipedia language project. Thank you, panel. I think we're, we're gonna move on to the lightning talks. Thank you so much.